Moving to the Twin Cities, wondering what the difference is between Minneapolis and St. Paul? Well, let's take a look. My name is Mary Schumann and I am a realtor here in the Twin Cities and I do videos every week to help people get a handle on what to expect if they move to the Minneapolis St. Paul area. I put together a relocation guide that you can download for free in the description box down below my video. My contact info is there as well so if you have a question let me know. The Minneapolis St. Paul metro area is made up of seven core counties Anoka, Carver, Dakota, Hennepin, Ramsey, Scott, and Washington, which are all within Minnesota. However, because we border on Wisconsin, many people live in Pierce or St. Croix counties in Wisconsin and work in the Twin Cities. People here refer to this whole area generically as the metro or the cities. So how will you know which of the Twin Cities is the right one for you? Well, today I just want to hit on a few ways that they compare to each other. The two cities would probably be one city anywhere else because they are so close to each other and they are separated mainly by the Mississippi River. And yet, they each have a distinctive character. Minneapolis feels more buttoned up, polished, new, and bustling compared to St. Paul. Minneapolis is home to a sparkling skyline filled with skyscrapers and the downtown is constantly under construction as buildings go up to house the population that wants to live right at the center of everything. Both of the cities are more than just workday destinations, so if you're looking for an urban lifestyle, you can get it here. Minneapolis has a healthy condo market in the urban core and a lot of desirable and well-maintained neighborhoods within the city limits. St. Paul doesn't feel as heavy on the condos, but it is filled with beautiful, mature neighborhoods that are bursting with historic homes. St. Paul is the capital of Minnesota, but it can feel like the sleepier of the two cities. So let's compare them just based on size. Minneapolis has about 437,000 residents in the city itself, whereas St. Paul is the smaller of the two with about 305,000 people. I almost said only. <laughs> The metro area has grown over 14% since the census in 2010 and has year-over-year -year population growth of about one and a third percent. Minneapolis resides within Hennepin County, which is a very large county that encompasses Minneapolis as well as several suburbs on the south, west, and north sides of the city. St. Paul is different. It resides entirely within a much smaller county called Ramsey County, and all of St. Paul's suburbs are a part of other counties. So what about the cost of living? While we all pay just about the same amount for things like food, utilities, and gasoline, where you will see a difference is in actual housing-related costs. The median home prices as of November of 2020 for a single family home in the metro area, the median price is $336,990. In Minneapolis, the median price is $305,000 and in St. Paul, the median single family home price is $240,000. For townhouses in the metro area, the median price is about $229,000. Minneapolis has a median price of $275,000 and St. Paul has a median price of around $240,000. The condo market, the median price for the metro area is about $185,000. Minneapolis has a median price of $265,000 and St. Paul sits right at the median also at $185,000. People complain about taxes here, so let's talk about property taxes. They vary by county. Hennepin County property tax rate, which is Minneapolis, is 1.36%. Ramsey County has a property tax rate of 1.3%, so a little lower. And the state of Minnesota's average property tax rate is 1.08%. The national average for a property tax rate is about 1.15%. So Minnesota as a whole has a lower than average property tax rate, but as you would expect with any urban area, the rates in the city are higher. If you're concerned about housing as a percentage of your monthly expenditures and you want to live in the city, you are more likely to find a more affordable home and pay a lower tax rate in St. Paul than you would in Minneapolis. 
One thing that no one mentioned to us when we purchased our home, but that we have found to be a nice benefit of living in the state of Minnesota, is that when you file income taxes, there is a third return. Not so fun to do a third return, but you file that for a property tax rebate if you filed a homestead exemption on your home. So it's not something to skip. When you file that, you'll file it at the same time as your other tax returns, but then you'll probably forget about it and get a nice fat check sometime in the summer, which is awesome. Okay, so how do people here get around? Commute times for people in both cities are roughly the same at 23 to 24 minutes. Most people in the Twin Cities do commute by car and usually alone. However, each city does have the benefit of public transportation. The Metro Light Rail serves the downtown areas of both Minneapolis and St. Paul, as well as branching to the University of Minnesota and south to the Mall of America and MSP Airport. But if you want to get around within the cities via public transportation, you'll need to take a bus. Metro Transit buses run frequently and in my experience, they are quite clean. So we moved from Chicago, we felt a little disoriented because the public transit system here isn't quite as developed and we were also used to relying on taxi cabs. I think that's old school now, but anyway, any rides here are gonna be through Uber, Lyft, or other rideshare services. You won't really see many cabs looking for fares, which is probably normal throughout most of the US anyway. The Twin Cities differ in income and education demographics as well. Minneapolis is a little more well-heeled with a median income of almost $64,000, while St. Paul's median household income is about $59,000. Minnesota has a very educated population in general, and when you look at Minneapolis, about 49.5% of adults hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and in St. Paul, that average is a little over 40%. So what about the arts? If you like arts, both cities have a wide variety of choices. St. Paul's downtown is home to the Ordway Theater, the beautiful old Fitzgerald Theater, the Fitzgerald was home to the NPR show, The Prairie Home Companion, for many years, and it hosts a wide variety of theater and talks by notable people. Minneapolis has the Orpheum Theater, where you'll see traveling Broadway shows, and the Guthrie Theater for more independent productions. Both cities have a lot of small independent theaters as well. If I in visual arts, Minneapolis has the Walker Art Center, where you can see contemporary art, and the newly rehabbed Minneapolis Sculpture Garden is adjacent to it. If more traditional art and antiquities are your thing, the Minneapolis Institute of Art is for you. If you've seen my videos, you know that I love the parks. So let's talk about the parks between the two cities. St. Paul has 179 parks and 100 miles of trails, but the most impressive park in St. Paul, to me, is the Como Zoo and Conservatory. The zoo is absolutely adorable and free, and the conservatory is like a little jewel box. I particularly love going there in the depths of winter to breathe in the warm, clean air that all the plants emit and just take in the gorgeous displays of flowering plants that they put around the reflecting pool there. It's a really nice break from snow and cold. In the summer, there is a small amusement park right next door to the zoo, so if you have little kids and you want to let them go on rides without the production of going to somewhere big like um, Valley Fair Amusement Park, you can take a more low-key approach and they will love it. St. Paul also has several aquatic centers, one of which is indoor, and that's a big plus when you live somewhere with winters like ours. And they also have multiple municipal golf courses. Now Minneapolis. Minneapolis has 160 neighborhood parks and each one generally has a field, a community building with a gym or a warming house, and a playground with a wading pool. These little parks are the heart of each neighborhood, and while everyone is welcome, they feel like the front yard gathering spot for people that live in that neighborhood. Minneapolis doesn't have a zoo. The Minnesota Zoo is down in Apple Valley, but it does have what are called the Grand Rounds, which is a series of connected scenic parkways that encompass the chain of lakes. In addition, there's several larger regional parks, and these are real destinations for anyone who lives in the metro area, and those include places like Minnehaha Falls and Theodore Worth Park. If you're into golf, Minneapolis also has seven municipal courses. So last but not least is professional sports teams. Minneapolis is home to the bulk of the teams with the Vikings, Timberwolves, Lynx, and Twins all playing here. 
And then hockey in the form of the Wild and the Minnesota United soccer teams are both playing in St. Paul. Are you gonna choose where you live based on which professional sports are played in that city? Probably not. But hey, it's good to have a general sense of the difference between the two cities, and when you get the itch to see something different, you can just spend 10 more minutes in the car and check out how the other half lives. So let me know if you have questions about living here in Minneapolis, St. Paul, or anything related to real estate here. I would love to help you out. See you next week, right here.